In 429, more than 80,000 vandals cross the 12-mile Strait of Gibraltar to their new home. It is the largest seagoing movement of barbarians the world has ever seen. But their migration doesn't turn out as planned. When Roman Governor General Boniface learns that the entire conflict was a plot by Aetius, he withdraws his offer to the Vandals. Almost as they're getting off the boat, so to speak, they get the very bad news that the general in Africa, the Roman general, has changed his mind. <laughs> Vandals are not happy at having their invitation to North Africa canceled at the last minute. And they've got no place to go. All dressed up and no place to plunder. The Vandals will not be turned back. They are unleashed and unstoppable. When the Vandals take over North Africa, they we're told that uh, they very quickly um, seized control, basically, of as much wealth as they possibly could. Even the Roman army is powerless against them. The Vandals had their opportunity to take North Africa because of the weakness and disunity in the Western Roman Empire. As punishment for his scheming, Aetius has been stripped of his rank, triggering civil war. The Roman Empress Placidia sends what troops she can into North Africa to stop the marauding vandals. But they are too little, too late. While the Western Empire tears itself apart in Europe, the vandals gain a greater foothold in North Africa. push eastward until they reach the city of Hippo Regis, now Anaba in Algeria. They lay siege to the heavily fortified city. months, the Vandals keep the city in a stranglehold, while Africa's grain fields go unharvested, and the hunger pangs ripple across the empire. But for the Vandals, the city of Hippo presents more than plunder. Locked inside is St. Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo Regis. The most famous man in the church at the time of the Vandal invasion of North Africa is St. Augustine. There's no doubt about it. He has written tons. He's popular. They're bestsellers, if you would, of the day. He's also become incredibly important as a churchman and as a bishop. Augustine serves as a precious symbol of hope to the Catholic Church and as a target of deepest loathing to the Vandals, who are Aryan Christians. A holy war is brewing. Christianity is not unified. Christians who come to be called Catholics believe that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are equal and the same. Aryan Christians believe that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are not equal and are not the same thing. So they viewed the entire attack of Africa in some ways as a crusade. And Arianism was going to reign supreme. Augustine, aging and unwell, motivates his flock to defy the Vandal invaders and their heretical Aryan beliefs. But within three months, his advanced age catches up with him. He dies, shaking the faith of his followers and giving strength to his enemies. 
Outside the walls of Hippo Regis, things couldn't be worse. The Roman army, depleted by civil war in Europe, is no match for the swelling Vandal ranks. of North Africa who are Aryan Christians who are actually glad to see the Vandals because the Vandals are also Aryans and are going to support the Aryan Roman Christians in North Africa. The Vandals easily defeat the Imperial Army in Africa. In doing so, they transform from barbarian invaders to holy warriors fighting for their Aryan beliefs. The Vandals have come to North Africa to stay. Backed into a corner, Roman Empress Placidia sends an ambassador to strike a treaty with Geyseric. <laughs> In an act of good faith, Geyseric agrees to send his son Hunneric to the western capital of Ravenna as a hostage of peace. Rome then surrenders the region around Hippo Regis to their new ally, the Vandals. But for the Catholics of North Africa, there shall be no peace. As Geyseric expands his control, his Aryan vandals swarm the Orthodox churches, persecuting their Catholic enemies and stealing their wealth. <laughs> the Vandal were a warrior culture, Winning, taking other people's things was a way of life for those men, uh, and Geyseric was raised in that tradition. And Geyseric will keep taking. Within five years, his son Hunneric is released from Ravenna, and Geyseric sets his sights on Carthage in modern-day Tunisia. It is the wealthiest, most sophisticated city in North Africa. And Geyseric will make it his bloody gateway to the Empire Beyond. Ah! Geyseric's Vandal forces have beaten the Roman army and staked their claim to North Africa. Geyseric craves the very heart of North Africa, Carthage. Carthage was probably the third most important city in the Roman Empire. Um, it was the focus for trade in the Western Mediterranean. It is a city of style and leisure. With one of Rome's largest fleets sitting in the harbor, it is a plum too ripe for Geyseric to resist. I Roma. It's entirely possible to imagine uh, the Vandals being invited into Carthage by the, the governor of Roman Carthage and then deciding to take over the city suddenly and unexpectedly. In a single day, the Vandal forces capture the unsuspecting Roman city and declare it their own. It was like cutting Chicago out of the heartland of America. It was a supreme economic blow to the Roman Empire. 
in losing Carthage, the Empire has lost far more than a crucial city. The Vandals have snatched the bulk of the Imperial Roman fleet. As part of their new Aryan Empire, the Vandals persecute the Roman Catholic priests, cleansing Carthage of its heretical beliefs and winning followers. Some Roman Christians said the Vandals were God's agent in purifying a sinful world by turning prostitutes into respectable married women, by suppressing homosexuality, by preventing adultery, uh, the Vandals were doing God's work. Even the Catholic elite aren't spared the Vandals' wrath. They are forced to surrender their cash and jewels to fund the Vandals' growing nation of Aryans. They engaged in a kind of carrot and stick approach to getting people to convert. The stick was the persecution, torturing um, execution. The carrot was the possibility of rewards, the possibility of um, a place in the Vandal administration of, of Africa. From his stronghold in Carthage, Geyseric launches his crusade across the Mediterranean into Europe. In 440, the Vandals raid nearby Sicily, which the Empire depends on for its grain after losing Africa. 